name is Joseph H. Cohn. <laughs> what does the H stand for? Uh, Hyman. Joseph uh, uh, Hyman. It's a Jewish name. And that was changed? To, in English it's uh, Joseph H. Uh, Hyman. Joseph Hyman. And my father's name was Stuart Mayer. Uh, this was, uh, uh, but they mostly called them Morris Cohn. Once you got to America. An American name. And in Jewish is uh, Yosef Chaim. That's uh, his Jewish name. That's your Jewish name. I'm the son of Yosef Chaim. A Dewitt mayor. When you got to America, did you still use your Jewish names? Or did you start calling no, each other? it was changed to Joseph H. Cohen. And I was born, you want to know where I was born? Yeah, and, and when you were I born. I was born in 1897, on September the 28th. And uh, in a little uh, town called Jintama. Called what? Jintama. That's what I thought. That's the name of uh -huh. the city in Russia. And we left there in 1905, when we came here. It came to Philadelphia and uh, used to have a landing place in Philadelphia on Washington Avenue. It wasn't uh, in Ellis Island. It was, we landed in Philadelphia. And we landed, uh, my, uh, my father came here in 1903. And he was here two years and then he sent for us. And we came back uh, to, uh, to America. So we came on an ox wagon, and we had to steal across the, the uh, boundary between uh, Russia and Germany. Of course, if you wanted to go that way, you needed a passport. And we didn't have no money for a passport, so we had to steal across the boundary line. And we waited uh, across the boundary line about a day and a half. And about four, uh, three o'clock in the morning, they woke us up. Uh, and it was my brother, and my brother Frank, and me, and my sister Tilly, and my sister Rosie. And we waited till about four o'clock, and they put us into that ox-driven wagon. It was a great big wagon that was driven by ox, yeah, oxen. You know, uh, instead of, uh, you know, an ox is. Uh, yeah. So they used to drive them in a in, 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 uh, taxi wagon, and they packed in into that uh, wagon about 30 people that was going to steal across the boundary. And the, uh, the boundary lines, so they were brought out. So a certain uh, time of the night, that they would walk away, and, and you know, there was, they had a, a, in order to get there, you had to get a, an agent that subscribed all those that want to steal a course, and that had paid so much money. And uh, my father paid uh, the, on a shift uh, ticket, for, on a ship line, and they took care of these agents. So by four o'clock in the morning, they stole it. They got us, woke us all up, and we all got packed into the, into the wagon. And uh, my sister Rosie was a little bit of about two years old then. Uh, so so the, one, one man was carrying her into the wagon. They, 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 was, they had about 20 or 30 people, and they were major people that were still on the course. And uh, one, one took Tilly, and I was the walk, uh, walker already. So they dumped us into the wagon, and we were going across. And my brother Frank was the head, and my brother was there. And then they packed, we were all on top of the other. So they were riding around about two hours on that wagon. And about uh, from four o'clock, it started to rain. And there were the drains and drains, like, and it was flooding, and all the water we got in, uh, and we were all soaking wet uh, in there while we were going across. Finally, we landed in the town in uh, Austria, like, 
and we got there, we just, they didn't know what to do with us. <laughs> All the people, you know, those soaking wet, they, they took us in there and they had a bath and everything. See, that was all paid for by the ticket, when you bought a ticket for the, to send, uh, my father paid for the ticket to send us there, and he didn't have the money to pay, so he gave us some of my uh, on and then he was paying 50 cents a week or a dollar a week to pay off for the trip. And then, uh, when we got to the, the next day, about two or three days later, they packed us in again, and we were in Austria, and then they took us to Berlin, a city in Germany. And, uh, Had you ever been in a city before? It wasn't, uh, it didn't take us to Berlin, Berlin is the capital, it was a city named Bremen. And we stood there, and, and that's a city for two weeks before they had to ship us across the English Channel. And that was the most horrid trip you, and you ever you still took remember. in your life. You, it was so bad that every morning, you know, the, the passage we had was in a steerage, right? You know, it wasn't like a first class. <laughs> so anyhow, they packed us all in there and then we, so they went by boat from Bremen after two weeks, we were riding around, we didn't know where we were going. The two they weeks that you us all the way around, and uh, they took us to the boat, a little boat. Boy, it was, I can still remember how, how tough that boat was. And uh, we all got in there, we uh, took from Bremen to Liverpool, that's where we went. We had to go through the English Channel. And uh, in the English Channel, they, you go through Lo and to London, past London, you go all the way around without way to Liverpool. And so all the people that were on, besides that, there was plenty more people. And they, we all got on a boat that, uh, it was, it was a, a ferry boat, like, you know. Uh, and everyone on that ship got so sick, they were all dying. Every one of them, that's how bad it is. I was the only one who survived. I was the only one that was able to go up on a plane, on a boat there. And uh, they were all laying on there, and Rosie uh, was crying, and uh, all of them, they were, uh, even my brother Frank. So I used to sneak up on a uh, on the top of the boat, and they had oranges, and I used to get the oranges and all of that and bring it downstairs so they ate it. it uh, uh, that boat took four days to go from uh, such a short distance. And everyone was sick. But, uh, uh, seasick that, or disease sick? Huh? Seasick or did they have a disease? Uh, seasick. Uh, it, it was rough. The uh, English Channel was so... In that days it was... Uh, well, you know, here they got pants and all that. We were down in a dungeon life. <laughs> you couldn't even find anybody. Finally, after a couple of days, it took them about two or three days to uh, to get to Liverpool. And uh, but they, after a while, they all got better, and it was nice, nice riding you know, on there. And finally, we got to Liverpool. Everybody was happy, and I was uh, to me. I didn't know what you know that was you were supposed to be. To me, it was like a trip. On it. Of course, I didn't feel sick, so I had uh, oranges. When you got an orange over there, you think you were a millionaire. That's how much you enjoyed. Was there any time that it was danger? There was no danger on that boat, it's only that it was rough. Okay, but it was, what about the two weeks that you had to wait before you uh, yeah, got on the boat? Then when we got to Liverpool, so we missed the sh a ship that was going to take us to Philadelphia. So it took about two weeks we were in Liverpool. And we were traveling around and my brother was the leader. He was about 11 years old, 10 years old, I don't know where. So he used to go around, find out when the boat is coming or when the train is coming, all that stuff. Wouldn't be, we wouldn't be getting, able to get here. It took about two weeks, and finally the boat came aboard, and everybody was happy. 
and they packed us in on the boat, and we stopped trying to fill it off. It right. took 16 <laughs> days from London Six to out? Philadelphia on the boat. A 16 boat or 16? Huh? How many days? 16 days. Over two one weeks. six? Yeah, yeah one, uh, one over six. two weeks. Over two weeks. From, so that's cheap from uh, Liverpool is in England yeah. to Philadelphia. How did your family choose to go to Philadelphia and not through Ellis Island? Because, well, that's why the ticket was poor. Okay, so this my father was there. Was he bought the ticket here, so he sent the tickets uh, from where we live to Philadelphia. To Philadelphia. And, uh, How did your father end up coming to Philadelphia? Well, then? he came, he was a traveling type of a man. You know, he, uh, he was with tricks, and then they all decided to go, so he went through. Okay. He couldn't make a living there. Uh, he made a living by selling goods and things like that. And then, let me tell you, till we reached Philadelphia, that was uh, interesting. So that boat that we were on was on the last road, and it was so bad, the boat that was almost sinking every minute, and then we hit into a storm, and they were, everybody that were up on the deck and crying and everything, they, they thought any minute the boat's going to go under, that's how bad it was. I still remember that uh, boat. Uh, and. Uh, in the middle of the trip, uh, they were singing, and I remember a lot of people died on the, on a trip. Uh, they used to tie them up or roll them up or over. Anyone that you know? I saw all these things. This is a, a true story, you know, there ain't no made out. Thing. So uh, when we were halfway across, Everybody was crying, and a lot of Jews there that were reading books. And I was only six, I wasn't even six, six or seven years old. And uh, I seen all of them, uh, and I was uh, glad everybody was on, the board, on top of deck. So I was on top of deck. It came about two weeks, and the storm let up. You know, it was such a big storm that it took. Uh, a lot of out of uh, even the people that maintained the boat, they were scared stiff too. But I didn't know what it was. I was a happy kid. What do I know what was going to happen? So we finally got a, on the boat, uh, on the boat and this clears the storm, and we kept on going. And the boat came, and everybody was happy and dancing on it. We were in a lower storage, like where, like the de uh, or not out on the. The uh, first is the, uh, oh, the deck, the and above the deck is where the first place passes. We were hall. in the dungeon line. So we were there, and finally we reached Philadelphia. We come to Philadelphia. We, my mother used to make suits for us, and we were walking, everybody was howling, green horns, and uh, all that. Uh, <laughs> we, were thumped, we were the best dressed. She made uh, blouse. Uh, uh, and bloom of pants, and uh, we thought we were dressed all. And we finally reached Philadelphia, uh, so when we reached Philadelphia, my father rented a house on 2nd and Christmas Street. You know where that is? No. In Philadelphia. How long was it from when your father left until your, so Bobby and you and the rest About of the two children? years. What did you do in Russia for money for those two he years? He used to be a salesman and everything. When he got here, the Jews used to, uh, when any green on came, they tried to help one another. You know, they used to give him food and things like that and take him in. And he was a happy go lucky guy, so they took special care for him. And they, he couldn't make a living here. And here he had a wife and four kids in the old country. So they realized they got to help me. So they taught him to paint, a real painter. So they had uh, houses to paint, so he would paint. And he was a, a certain kind of guy that they didn't care for anything. And then he, and he used to work on scaffold outside. And he was with a swing. They used to paint the houses that way. So uh, he would not have winded and he was a uh, hard worker. So uh, that went on for a uh, good, uh, he, all his life he was a painter. 
and uh, that's about all. And uh, about uh, five years after we came here, uh, ten years after, so when I applied for a civil paper, so uh, you had to give the name of the ship that we came on. You know, at least he uh, would apply. So we applied for the ship, and I told him that. He said, oh, you're crazy. That, well, that boat was su uh, sunk on the next trip. That uh -huh. we, wow. We, uh, when that went back, and on the next trip, boy, uh, it sank with all the passengers on board. Oh, wow. What was the name of the, sh of the ship? I don't remember that. It's... Uh, an old time ship. It was an old ship in the place where we well, we made it, but the next ship. Uh, if you didn't something. make it, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. How is Russia different from America? Russia, I can tell you how. Uh, when I was a kid, every little boy they used to go to Khaida. You know what a Khaida is? Mm -hmm. uh, he was school, he was school like, mm -hmm. and they used to have a, a teacher. An old man, he was a, like a rabbi and a teacher, and, we, and he, he had the school himself, and paid next to nothing. And the kids would go in the morning and stay till late at night. They used to teach him and all, whatever they did. They, uh, and in order, uh, we went to go to uh, school, so they used to have a little square box and make a lantern out and put a candle in there. And every kid my age, well, uh, about oh, wow. three, four years old, had that candle and they lighted it. Yeah, they didn't have no electric lights or things like sure. that. So they used to go walk okay. from the rabbi's place is somewhere in a hole, I can remember, to where we live. So that's about all that in there. And the city, Russia, and the Russia where we lived was a pretty fairly city. It was a pretty what? Uh, fair size city. Fair size, yeah, yeah. a good size. What was that? That was a Dell. Oh. Um, what else do you want to know? Adele uh, tell me more about Russia. What do, do you remember what this what the town looks like? I want uh, what? Do you remember what the town looked like? Yeah. And what your house was like? Yeah, there were all separate houses over there. So she's and coming were, in about you know, they, they had the, uh, you know, a lot of conglomerates. Yeah. Right, right. I guess we'll make it. So the police were used to take care of the Jews. They used to watch the Jews. They used to go to the court and the web like they used to kill them. So we had to live in fear all the time. Did you see any one time? Uh, so they, the Jews used to pay off the Especially police. Especially in Philadelphia, so I could get to uh, uh, You know, so the police wouldn't let them go on ride. They couldn't go on ride if the police were on. And the Jews didn't pay them so much. Uh, so they were threatening them that they're going to send them. Pogrom, you know, the ones that are rioters, mm -hmm. down to kill all of the Jews. So uh, there was a, a river there where we lived near. And all, and all the way up the top of the river, all these uh, uh, rioters were living up there. And they were waving to us, wait when they get the way to, uh, they would all come down and kill all of the Jews. I was in a basement for two weeks in a cellar there, and uh, the, the, the police uh, didn't get paid off, so they kept on the on a string. And these got and got him, and uh, the rioters there waiting to get the word to uh, be okay. To, uh, so uh, it took two weeks. Finally, the Jews got together so enough money to pay the police. When they paid the police, so they called it off. So the rioters couldn't do nothing. So and then uh, we we were on, in the cellar, and all of us, Frank and and uh, Tilly and Rosie, but they didn't know what it's all about. I was uh, at the age of uh, getting to know already. So uh, after they called off the rioters, so we all came out and. Uh, they lived a life of Raleigh, and uh, whenever there was a pogrom, a riot, plenty of Jews got killed. Did you ever witness one? 
I witnessed it, but I didn't have, you know, I was a kid, I wasn't in the center of what it was. The next day, you'd see this Jew uh, was killed and that Jew was killed, and uh, you know, that uh, lived around there, and they carried on, they carried on terror. And if, if a person died, they used to carry him on a board, a flat board, they lay him on and they carry him to the grave. And put them in the water and again. As I say, I witnessed a lot of them. And uh, otherwise, uh, it was a tough, uh, a tough life for the Jews. Uh, they suffered plenty of it. What did your mother do um, in Russia while your father was in America? She didn't do nothing. She was born, when she was born, her mother died. And uh, she was, uh, so her father, he was a do-nothing man, he was very living from practically nothing. So uh, he blamed my mother for, uh, his wife was uh, my mother's uh, mother, so he blamed her on, on account of his wife dying. So he didn't want to have nothing to do with her. So he sent her away in a nursing home to be nice like by a stranger. Meanwhile, her parents, my mother's, uh, mother's parents, uh, my mother's grandmother's parents, uh, was my mother's mother's parents, they were the wealthiest Jews in that city. Do you know their names? Theirs, like. And uh, when uh, her they mother died, they, uh, her, her grandfather, inherited a lot of money. So uh, my mother was supposed to get a trade, but in them days they didn't have a, like today, a legal field. They, when they died, they used to control, uh, make the liquor, you know, whiskey and all that dry. What were their names? Uh, well, I, I don't remember my mother's uh, maiden name, but her, her, uh, her name was Go uh, Gorenstein, and uh, she, uh, that's her, uh, the husband, uh, it was my grandfather, but his name was Gorenstein, and that's uh, my mother's name, I, uh, it's a long time, I don't remember, but he left two sons, and they were the wealthiest uh, people in the city, uh, very, very rich. But uh, well, they got the money, so uh, they disrupted my mother. She didn't connect, get anything from it. So she was sent away to home, and uh, for years, and uh, her father wanted to marry, marry somebody in the old country. If uh, a wife dies, the husband. Like in the last 30 days, he has to get married. So he would marry somebody. For 30 days, he married. And 30 days, he married another woman, and she didn't have my mother. They sent away. So they were living together for a few years, two, about three, four years. And when he, uh, and they didn't have no children. So uh, the, if they don't have children, they go to the rabbi to find out why she don't have children. So the, the rabbi was to be the guy and the guy that tells you everything. You know, he knew everything. He, so he told uh, my, uh, his wife that the reason she don't have no children is because he sent my mother away to uh, town and didn't take care of my mother. That's why he didn't have no children. She will never have children, of course, my mother's there. So when she heard that, she wanted to have children, so she must have gone uh, up on uh, uh, arguing against uh, him why he, was, he, he wanted he should bring my mother to back to uh, did home. She, did the second wife know that Bubby was alive? Did she know that he had a child? Or did he send her away no, well, before she even knew that there was an, another child? Well, that was before he married. Her. Right, but was, did she, was she aware that there was a child? That yeah. He, oh, so well, she, uh, she knew that. Well, they, they didn't make a match. The guy loved her or something like right. that. 
they got married, that's it. She was a single girl, and uh, she, I don't know if she was beautiful or not, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they married her. In 30 days, the Jewish religion tells you that the uh, man uh, is left uh, without a wife for 30 days, he has to, he must get married. So uh, after they brought the, my mother back home, uh, to home. How old was your mother when they brought her home? Uh, what a home uh, she must have been by uh, 12 or 13 no, years No, no, no. She was only about four or five years old. How old was she when they sent her away? Yeah. How old was she when she was, she was sent away? Right after uh, she was only a few weeks old. So oh, when she probably was, not. When yeah. she was born, he didn't want to have nothing to do. He blamed her for her. Blamed her for her. Oh, her so so when he went to go get your yeah. mother, she didn't know that he was her father. Her father. No, she. Uh, they sent them to uh, my mother. Was in the she was away about ten years. No, it was about five years. She said. Don't tell me. Okay. Well, you know, I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> okay. She was away about five, five years, or maybe ten years, because they noticed her in the home after it took ten, uh, ten years before my. You know, uh, her uh, stepmother uh, brought her back. So uh, she was given to a, uh, what do you call it, uh, a whole uh, uncle of hers. My mother's uh, uncle, she, he was a rabbi. So he used to teach kids how to doubt them and all Hebrew. And she was the only girl there, so they stuck her into the same room with uh, the, the boys. boys, and she was learned Hebrew better than all the boys put together. Till today, when we used to go to synagogue, she was sitting in the middle, and all the women were listening. No woman knew what to taught read. anything. So, as it was, when, they were, uh, when she came back home, so uh, they, uh, they got the uh, start to have children, so they had. Three daughters, the stepmother had three daughters, and uh, my, and she was crazy for my mother. The, okay, you know, the stepmother, she had well, three had children, the three daughters of herself, okay. and uh, she was so nice to my mother. She said, my mother felt so nice because she had somebody that really loved her. So I went on, and the three daughters, my mother helped raise them. And her stepmother was crazy for my mother too, and she took sick. Her stepmother took sick too, and she, before you know she died. So when she, before she died, she made my mother promise her that she would take care of the three girls. So my mother took at the three girls to that, and uh, she passed away. So my mother used to take care of the three girls. Then. When uh, 30 days were up on so the, her father remarried the third That's wife. Cheap. And this third wife was a horror. She was a waste of war. I, I remember her, you know, I mean, when I was a kid and I she used to see my grandfather, he was a red headed, uh, and he didn't know for nothing, whatever, whatever food he got, he had. Uh, he didn't have it. Uh, the wife used to work, and uh, he used to be a happy, lucky guy. He didn't, he didn't, not there. And meanwhile, my mother used to have a be friendly with a young boy that they were, uh, you know, a cut company. They were played all to the time, and then when they got up to age to get married. So they, my mother was in love with this here guy, and uh, they found out that he needed a certain kind of money for a dowry. They, uh, a woman has to give a dowry to the man that she uh, so the man they they don't, didn't deal direct with the boy or the girl. They did direct by the parents. They decide how much to give it. Mm -hmm. So they went down to a certain price that was pretty low. And this fellow was all satisfied, and my mother liked him too.
So they went to, uh, yeah, so they, they, her father didn't have a dime, he didn't have nothing, uh, he couldn't even feed his own for these girls. So they wanted to know how much a dollar he can get, <laughs> so he did, uh, they didn't have it, so they called it off. Oh, so they didn't call it off, so this uncle that was a teacher, mm -hmm. he was a smart guy, so he said he's going to go to our uncles that were left all the big money. Mm -hmm. And the guy had a farm, mm -hmm. it was almost a half a city, uh, about 10, 15 blocks. Uh, uh, that's how kind of farm he was. He was a, they were in the liquor business, a brother. The two brothers, they had the money that uh, was supposed to be for her mother's. And uh, then uh, there would be... Here she is, Hold it off and then. Well, of course, says uh, he's going to go talk to the other uncle, uh, her, uh, her mother's uncles. And see, he was an uncle and they were uncles. And he was such a brilliant man, you know, a teacher and all. Uh, it was terrific. So he went to see her, and he had a walk on a side. He was to walk for miles till he reached the house where they lived, and they lived in the mansion and all. And they, his children, you can imagine how wealthy he was. All his children became doctors. He sent them to German agents to become doctors, and of course, a fortune. So when he reached his house. This uh, uncle, uh, uh, the, this uh, one who was a teacher, he was going to talk to him about uh, a uh, dowry for my mother so she could marry this fellow she lived, loved. So uh, he finally got there, so it was Saturday, so in the, in the old country, Saturday, uh, the wealthy man, they rest, they don't do nothing. nothing. So he was sleeping. So he came there, it was maybe 12, 1 o'clock, so he was sitting down and waiting for the prince, a uh, big uh, man like that. So he'll come out, uh, until he wakes up, he must have waited till about 4 or 5 o'clock. Finally he comes down, and he looks around to see my uncle, he had respect for him. He says, how come you're coming and all, uh, how you feel and everything, you're friendly. He says, watch your trouble, so he starts to tell her, uh, tell him that my mother has uh, got a boy, uh, a booker, you know, a boyfriend, and uh, the people want a uh, dowry. And, uh, she, you know, her father's a poor man, he doesn't have nothing, so when he, uh, so he come, maybe, uh, He'll, he'll give her enough for a dowry so she could marry the son. So he looks at him, he says, that's all it is. Well, no trouble at all. He says, if you don't have a dowry, he says, go back here and tell her uh, father, you know, <coughs> that whatever her father will give her, he's going to give her twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a foxy youth, and this rabbi is such a smart, man uh, that he was, he was happy and uh, lucky that he was going to give him double. But the father was uh, going to give zero. So <laughs> when double uh, nothing. <laughs> did you ever hear that story? So uh, this is a true happening. It came through my time. So uh, they come, he comes uh, all the way down in and he's happy when he comes to the house. And how did you make it? Everyone asks about Oh, it's wonderful. Boy, he's such a nice man. He, he promised them he's going to help her as much as he can. And uh, how much money is he going to give it? He says, oh, he, he told them that whatever our father gives, he's going to give a double. So they said, but our father doesn't have anything. He's going to give it enough. So they, 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 uh, they, and the boy's parents, uh, he heard that there was no money, so they wouldn't the know the somebody that would have money. So meanwhile, my father came into the picture, and he was married, and his wife died. So he came to the city where my mother, uh, mother lived. Yeah, that's right. And. Uh, he came to that city, so they 
Uh, you know, he had furniture, he had everything for was quite this way, he didn't need anything. So my mother was a single woman, she was uh, about 21 at the most. Uh, so the, the, the them days, uh, 21, she's an old maid, already. they try to push her for anybody. <laughs> so they came around, and this, this guy, he came in, he was a handsome looking man with a beard and everything. So he came around to the synagogue there where they all gathered together. And and they told him that his wife died, and she li he lived in a different town from Chateau. He lived in a town called Bobditcher. And he, when he was born, his father died. So he was left an orphan too. Mm -hmm. But he made a living by hook or truck. Well, he always traveled all over to sell war or whatever. I mean, he made a fair living, not a living. So when he came to the synagogue and they told him that they got a nice girl for him, but she don't have no monob, you know, that's the dowry. She don't have no dowry and so uh, he looks, uh, he says, well, who, he told you to find out about, uh, all about her. He says, I don't need no dowry. He don't have to have no money. I don't want no dowry at all. And they thought he was crazy. They were afraid they, uh, to pass up, so they come to my mother's house where she lived. And meanwhile, her uh, father remarried uh, another wife, and with this other wife, he had four boys. And the three girls were four and three. So they, and my mother used to take care of the three girls because she promised her mother that, uh, her stepmother, that she was going to take care of. So uh, anyhow, the, the, when they come to my mother and, and asked, uh, told them that they got a wonderful man, he makes a living, he's a big traveling man, and he don't want no none of this, and so they grabbed him. So she uh, told him, the only way she'll marry him is she can take the three girls that were left to live with them. My father says, hey, well, it's okay, you have three daughters. Right? So anyhow, so uh, that's the way she married him. And uh, it was no love match. She, my mother was, uh, you never, you remember her? Mm-hmm. I remember she her. Pretty good. Tall, you know, my mm -hmm. father was a short man. Do you remember? You know, yeah, because he was dead before when you were well, yeah. He died when I was 12 yeah. years old. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, and uh, he, she had the three girls come and live with her. He had a house with furniture and everything. Mm -hmm. Then he used to travel. He'd go away maybe for a month, two months, come out, and they had to make some money, and he was a liver. One time he, he he went away on a trip and he never came back. And all these people that were friend, family there, mm -hmm. they were so hard. They used to treat one another like dogs. And they were they wouldn't help my mother for a thing. She, she used to work day and night by hand. She'd make blouses, shirts, and. Uh, she uh, for a customer and gave her a good, a good and she made it and she got paid. But other money she got, so she, she bought food to the feeders. And then and these three girls were living with us all the, all the time. And how old were these girls uh, when the she girls got married? Were, were up uh, in years. Of course, when I was about uh, five years old, uh, one of them got married. So they were uh, up in years too. So she married a first cousin of hers too. And they didn't have first cousins done there anyway. She married a first cousin in England. And my father and my mother used to be so conservative. She saved every dime she had and, uh, that, uh, that that she they made uh, so they had to make a wedding. And when they made a wedding. You know how they made a wedding? The, everybody was invited. And then at the uh, wedding, they announced who gives so much for drusha. You know what drusha means? Uh, present. 
I'm giving so much, I'm giving 50 cents on a dollar, and one of the musicians used to play, and uh, they give a percentage to the bride and groom, and all that. And uh, my mother made it, she spent all the money for the wedding. Regular that when they collect all the money that was donated, so she would back. give her back the money. But uh, she married a guy that was a tough customer. He wouldn't, and they got all the money and instead uh, help him uh, uh, give back my father and my mother the money that they spent for the wedding. They went to England. They went to live in England. Wow. So they were on the house for years and years on account of that. And then there was two other daughters living, and they lived with us too. And when they were, uh, and the oldest one was the one of mine, and she went to England. So the two daughters at the time, after we left, they went to live in England. So they were living in England all the time. And we tried to take her uh, out here uh, to Philadelphia all the time, but they didn't want to go. They wanted to stay in England. So the ones in England, they lived there and they married uh, somebody, uh, one of them. Uh, and one of them that mar uh, married uh, was uh, Ed Pearl. They moved to Chicago. That's Chinese mother? Uh, one of them. Uh, 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 my mother's sister, stepsister, she married another man, and uh, they moved to, to Chicago. And this uh, this one had four children. Uh, had four children, three girls and a boy. And this boy, they were all starving to death. You never know. Uh, we were the rich ones, you can imagine. So. Uh, one of them was, they were so poor, and uh, so one of them studied uh, in the University of Purdue. He was so brilliant, you know, he won, he won the Nobel Prize. That's uh, one of the sons. We met him. He yeah. came to Maryland. When, yeah. he, when he won the Nobel Prize, yeah. he came to Philadelphia, oh, and Maryland he had a party at her house. Too. He was yeah. a, so, uh, why don't you ask him some of your questions? Or is he answering something? He's answering a lot. Okay, all right. You want to ask me anything? Um, yeah, okay. When you went from Russia to America, did you bring anything with you? Or just no, the clothes on your back? Nothing. We came with our clothes and, and, uh, and a certain kind of uh, a storm uh, couch. Like you packed your clothes and food and everything you used to carry that. Uh, and I forgot the name they call it. Is it, uh, it wasn't a suitcase. I know what it, you've seen them in movies where yeah. they put everything in. That's it. all. It's it's a certain thing that they put all their clothes and food, and that's what they traveled in. And uh, when we came to Russia, like we moved on uh, the uh, 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 second uh, Christian Street. We lived on the second floor. It was a hell of a life. Then we moved. To, uh, every week we moved. And we moved uh, on Monroe Street, you know, it's improvement. From this place okay, we improved and the place was a dump on the fourth floor. And you had to walk up the four floors to go uh, in. So they had a rope in there on the top end. And we're like, uh, we were downstairs, we needed a, a pretzel or something. So the, she sent them down, cause so we were going to walk four floors. I used to carry... Um, yeah, yeah, remember uh, Ida? She was a baby then. When she was born in America. She was, was she the first one, one to be born uh, in yeah. America? Yeah. So she was born. We lived on the fourth floor there, and uh, I used to carry her down the, uh, every day down the steps, up the steps. How old were you when Ida was born? When Ida was born, I must have been about eight, nine years. What were your brothers and sisters like as kids, as little kids? Well, my brother Frank, he was the, you, you know Frank. I knew Frank, so did he. Right. I think he was, he died before Saul was born. Well, well, he was painting too. He had a struggle uh, too. What was he like as a little kid? Everyone had a struggle to die. And what was Frank like when he was a kid and you were growing up? What did you smart, do for fun? Uh, he was a smart kid. Yeah. And the, uh, 
And we thought he was going to be something, so he, nothing. He, he used to, yeah, he got a job for three dollars a week, you know, and uh, he was a uh, mainstream, you know, he was like a millionaire, so he fell in love with uh, my sister-in-law, Tanya. She was a greenhorn, you know, they, they used to have uh, people just come over to this country, they were called greenhorns. And he was American. He was American already. Yeah, he taught, went to school here, mm -hmm. mine, and uh, she didn't learn it, so she couldn't speak to her. And he fell in love with her. And they gave, uh, they matched him up with a girl. This is a good story, all right. <laughs> and they matched him up with a girl, and uh, this girl, uh, they says, uh, said that she's got $5,000. And she was about 10 years older than him. And he was a handsome looking boy. So everything was fine. So they looked at him, but he didn't care what how much he looked like, $10,000 or $5,000. So uh, they found out, uh, so uh, they kept on, and they were always going to settle for a man. They couldn't, he couldn't get a job. and. Uh, so they come out, how about the $5,000? Oh, she don't have $5,000. She's got a mother, an old mother that's living, and she carries insurance for $5,000. So when she dies, they'll have the $5,000. <laughs> I took care of that match. Yeah, that's, what, that's the kind of match this is. Oh, boy, this is, you, we lived through a life, in your life, you would have thought. And uh, uh, you can write from today to tomorrow, you can write a hundred books, and ain't even a tenth of what I'm telling you that really happened. Even the way they were raised. She was raised, she cost me $25. Okay. When, when she was born, she's the first child born in a hospital. And uh, in order for my mother to get her out, she had to pay twenty-five dollars. You never heard that, did you? No, I, I thought Ethel was the first one born in the hospital. No, you were the first okay. one. Okay. Uh, uh, Ethel, uh, Philip was born uh, uh, in the doctor's uh, or the doctor. My father painted the kitchen, so he didn't check for painting the kitchen. He gave uh, brought uh, my brother Philip to. Uh, he, he delivered him. For now, where? Uh, what was it was. Um, Frank, and then Tilly. No. Frank, maybe. and then you. Yeah. And then, and then Tilly, Tilly and, Rosie. and Rosie. And then you had Ida. Ida was born. And then again. then Phil. Uh, Ida, and then they had a little girl. Okay, Anne. Yeah. And, and she died. And after How did she die? She was uh, got pneumonia. That day. How old was she? How old was she when she died? About a year. Oh. Okay. Then. Uh, Philip was born. Your father thought that Anne was given the evil eye? A what? The evil eye. The Kinahara? The Kinahara. Oh. Your father, did he think that somebody gave Anne the evil eye? The one that died. Oh, the one that was... The, the, the Annie that died. The story is that maybe Pop thought that she got the evil eye. No. You know, at that oh, time... Oh, my father used to... Yeah. Yeah. That, that uh, somebody came in and looked... Uh, she had all her energies for everything. It's superstitious. Was my father didn't have nothing to do with that. And he belonged to a lodge. We had a we have a picture sometime. Maybe I don't know who got it. And uh, he belonged to a lodge and had a, a badge. You know, so he thought he was a old American with them. <laughs> he took pictures and with the the see a badge all the time. And uh, Let's go back to where did you get twenty five dollars to get oh, me wait. out of the hospital? Okay. Well, I I used to work. So oh, you I were saved. working. I, I what were you saved. doing? Did you uh, ever pay him back? No. I worked, worked at a factory first uh, when I was a kid. So they uh, taught me uh, on a sewing machine to make buttonholes. So I used to make three four dollars a week, and the quarters that I saved. Uh, at amount to twenty five dollars. Was was that three or four dollars a week? Yeah. How was that? It was was that okay? They had a work from 8 in the morning till 6 at night every, and Saturday included. You worked in Shabbos? Yeah. 
And then uh, I used to, uh, instead of going by trolley car to the place I worked, it was in Ray Street, uh, and we lived all the way downtown. So I used to hop a wagon, or a train, uh, that's the way they left work all the time. How old were you when my mother was born? How old was I? Let's see. You were? How old are you? Well, you're going to be, what, 92 or 93? I'm going to be 92. All right, so, all right, you, were so, 90. so you were 20 years old. 20, yeah. She was okay. about 20 years old. And my niece, Annie, is uh, six months uh, younger. older than her. Younger, younger. Older. She's a year and a half younger she, than you're me. You're younger than you. Yeah. See, my brother was married already, and he was starving to death, too. <laughs> So they had to take her out from the hospital, so I need 25 hours, so my 25 right. hours. Or your more. quarters. <laughs> Did she ever pay you back? Who? My mother. <laughs> <laughs> I never even heard that. <laughs> tell him about, tell Saul about my, the twin that was born with me. Oh, well, that was, uh, my mother didn't want any more children. So then she came, and then, she became pregnant uh, again, and uh, she didn't want no children because my brother was married uh, uh -huh. And here, how's it look for uh, grandmother, uh, the grandchild, so she was ashamed of herself. So she didn't want it, but she couldn't do a help like this. She had it. So uh, she carried on to her. She don't want, she don't want, or another. Then when she was born, she knew she had twins. Uh, my mother, and uh, so my mother, uh, we didn't even think about the doctor, the thing like that. Uh, so Ethel told me that she, my mother told her that she knew that it was twins on it. After she was born, and my mother wanted to know where the other one was, mm -hmm. the other child was. So they told her that it, she carried on for years that she was so uh, upset about uh, hey she had uh, 13 children already and she was upset that uh, she, lost one. Uh, was, she only had that one uh, girl she Did was he? some person uh, they all were that, uh, it's a story for every one of them what was your relationship like with your parents a what? Your relationship with your parents. Were you close to your father and mother? Oh, they didn't talk one another. They talked one another. No, not We have you? about 24 kids. <laughs> <laughs> what about you and your father and you and your mother? Well, my mother and I were always friendly, you know. My, all, all the children, you say one word against, and Tilly was our favorite. <laughs> Tilly was the favorite. Rosie was the tough one. She had more trouble with Rosie than anyone. How come? And, uh, on the who? Why? Why did she have trouble with Aunt Rosie? Well, well, what did was, Rosie do? Well, she did so many things that were... Well, let's uh, hear it. What did she do? Well, she remarried an Italian guy and my mother wanted to commit suicide on the ground there. And, uh, she well, how was she even like was a young child? She was 16 years old. And my, uh, well, she probably was, she, when she was growing up, she was mischievous. She got into a lot of trouble, didn't she, oh. Rosie? Before yeah. she was, before she, she married was, Jack, uh, again, uh, she always uh, gave Mom trouble, she didn't she? She used to work Saturday, so she'd get 50 cents in the department store for a whole day. She worked all day from 8 in the morning till 6 at night. And they used to pay him for a Saturday. They used to pay all the girls that worked there fifty cents. So she came back, uh, come back home, and takes the fifty cents and put her up there. And here, I worked like a horse, and I got up. She used to take the fifty cents over to my one. <laughs> I worked like a horse, and I don't know that. Oh. She was rebellious. Did he go to school? Who? You. Yeah, I was still, uh, I went to 12th grade Yeah. in school. What school did you go to, and what was it like? Uh, it was called, I went to three schools. One was called uh, Fletcher School, that was on 2nd and Christmas Street. I went for a few years, 
Then I went to Mount Vernon School a couple of years. And then uh, last uh, was I went to Ninth and Middle, the new, brand new school was, mm -hmm. was built. And uh, I was in about the 10th or 12th grade. I was pretty smart, but in them days, in order for you to work, you had to be 13 years old, and you had to get the papers. Mm -hmm. So I got the papers, and the teacher I had a pretty good teacher. He didn't want me to quit, so he wouldn't accept this year. But I, anyhow, I got away from it. I worked there. Then so I made three dollars a week. And I learned for, uh, what do you call it, the World War, first World War broke out, so I learned how to fix machines. So but did you go, were you in the Army? No. Yeah. They, uh, before the, I went to the Army, uh, and I enlisted in the first World War. I did the list, I was uh, yeah. uh, put for a, a war, mm -hmm. so the war finished. I was uh, maybe six months or a year younger than what they accepted then. Oh. They were accepting kids for 20 years old already, and my time didn't come up, so then the war was, was over. over. And how about the Second Frank? World War, I had two children, so I didn't have Now, what, during the war, what, what did you learn how to do? You, during the, the war? You said you learned how to work with machines. Well, I learned uh, how to fix machines. I, when I worked on the machine to make buttonholes, mm -hmm. so I learned how to fix them a little bit. Then I went in the place where they fix only the machines they used to have here. Uh, so the fellow I knew, he felt sorry for me, so he gave me jobs. So I did cleaning and everything, and I used to like, try to learn how to fix machines. So the mechanics, they, they used to be so uh, uh, abrupt, you know, they wouldn't actually look at uh, how to fix the machine. But they were afraid to take their rod. They were afraid to line out. So uh, they used to let me sit there, but they always tried the ways I couldn't see what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So, but I was inside that straightened everything up, and I knew the guy uh, that uh, hired me, he was, uh, he took a line to me, so he wanted me to, so he told them to, I said, to learn me, to teach me everything. So uh, anyhow, when the, the guy used to go out for lunch or something, I, so I used to take a part of the machines that he fixed, I could put it back, and this way, and all. I said, he, he would come up, he just said, did you want me with this? No, nah, I never thought of it. <laughs> so uh, I got away with it. And then, I seen a, 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 when a, the fellow that hired me, he was drafted in the army, he was a single guy too. So when he was drafted in the army, he was making parts for the sewing machine. He had a factory. Then I went in the place where they fix only the machines they used to have me. So the fellow I knew, he felt sorry for me, so he gave me jobs. So I did cleaning and everything. And I used to like try to learn how to fix machines. So the mechanics they they used to be so uh, uh, abrupt, you know, they wouldn't actually look at uh, how to fix the machine. But they were afraid they to they take were their rod. I learned how to put. So uh, they used to let me sit there, but they always tried the ways I couldn't see what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So, but I was inside that straightened everything up, and I knew the guy uh, that uh, hired me, he was, uh, he took a light to me, so he wanted me to learn. So he told them to, I said, to learn me, to teach me everything. So, uh, anyhow, when the, the guy used to go out for lunch or something like so I used to take a part of the machines that he fixed, I could put it back and this way and all. I said, he, he would come up, he just said, did you want me with this? No, nah, I never thought of <laughs> So uh, I got away with it. And then I seen a, 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 when a, the fellow that hired me, he was drafted in the army, he was a single guy too. So when he was drafted in the army, he was making parts for the sewing machine. 
he had a factory and he took me in there to work. So he told this guy that was managing it for him, he's going in the army. He says, you make sure you get this boy to learn everything and don't you ever fire him, he told him. So I, the guy, you know, I learned, I saw a lot of things and I learned a lot of things over there. Meanwhile, uh, he called me, he said, you know, he saw that I was going to be drafted, he says, you enlist, you will, uh, you'll, I'll uh, see that you'll get under me. He was uh, given the uh, uh, leadership, you know, like uh, he was made a lieutenant or a colonel. So uh, I said, no, I don't like it. <laughs> so I went out and I worked for him and I saw a lot of things, so I thought, what I need that, I'll go out and get a job. So I went in the factory to get a job. So you know how to fix this machine? I said, I only know the buttonhole machine. I said, yeah, I can fix anything. So they needed a mechanic so bad. So this is a good story. Uh, so uh, he had a machine. Every mechanic he got that. Uh, and the girls used to sit down and work on it. And it was no good. Uh, some of the mechanics were top-notch mechanics, and uh, and the girls were, uh, you know, they, they, they tried the machine and said, that don't work. <laughs> so they got rid of it. So uh, when I come in, I wanted a job. He said, you know how to fix this? Said, yeah, I know how to fix it. So they sent me over to this here machine. The girl that uh, everybody that uh, came to fix it, uh, she didn't like him, so she said, it's no good. So uh, I come in there, I sit down. I didn't even know how to thread that machine. <laughs> so I said to, to the girl, you work on this yet? So uh, she thread it up. So she thread it up, and I sit there and look at her, look at her, look at her. Well, I don't see now. I don't even know how to try it. So it works like a little bit, and she threaded it up. And, and it works a little bit, I said, try it. So she tried it, and it worked. I didn't do not do it. <laughs> so she hollers to the boss there, to the boss there, hey, come here, you, look at the kid I, uh, comes here, and he fixes it, and the machine works, and all them big uh, time uh, mechanics couldn't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so I became a mechanic. Then uh, every time, the kind of machine I didn't know how to fix, so they said the mechanic, he was showing me how to work. And then little by little, I learned. I'm talking about girls, I heard you were quite a Beau Brummel. A what? A Beau Brummel, a hit with the ladies. No, it wasn't that. See, I had five, six sisters, you know, and each one of them had girlfriends. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a million girls, I didn't even bother with girlfriends. So, uh, I, uh, come on, Joe. You were at the race fields. You were playing cards. You would come home late. You had girlfriends. Oh, we have. <laughs> the life of our <laughs> We heard my mother said that you used to send, take your clothes to the cleaners, and that they would go and pick up your clothes, and you would give them the change as a tip. <laughs> that they would all run to, to do your laundry to get your laundry for you because you let them keep the change from the whatever from the shirt. it was from the shirts. You don't remember that? I remember. Yeah. Everybody, we wanted to run and get yeah, your shirts so because if it was a do, uh, 75 I, cents. I, I, you know how much money there was involved. Probably like a cents, nickel. Uh, <laughs> well, that was a lot of money. Was a lot of money. Kids, if I took a bath, they washed the tub. <laughs> I was a big giver. You gave me a nickel. <laughs> how old were you? Did you live at home until you got married? Yeah, yeah everybody. How did you meet your wife? How did you meet well, Angie? it's a long story. I used to meet a lot of girls, but they, they were half ma uh, half, uh, they were not uh, right. Some of them uh, I liked, they didn't like me, but uh, a lot of them, they liked me, but I didn't like them, so we never got it. I used to take go out and make a, have a good time, but it uh, never meant anything. Where would you go? Uh, Daisy used to go to the movies, or we, I used to belong to the Elks Club. They, as they, somebody they didn't have no movies, 
and uh, at the Boston Club they would have movies and you could take somebody there. We used to go to baseball, uh, ba uh, what do you call them, fights, and best, uh, what was that now? Dances. And they played uh, music dances. Uh, they played uh, basketball, spas. Did you ever hear of spas? Yeah, the spas was the South So have a, a basketball game and after basketball game, the boys would they'd dance and have dates with the girls and so on. She uh, went, to, used to go to a basketball game with her girlfriend. Uh, so I went out with, uh, you know, I took her home. I had a car that day. Oh, uh, you were rich. Yeah. What kind of car? Yeah. What kind of car? I had a Ford at first. Were you the first one in the family to get a car? Yeah. So. Frank never learned how to drive, did he? Oh, I Frank. Learned. Frank never drove. No, he no. never drove. Philip, I learned Philip all yeah. the time. So every, he had accidents every week. He, he took one time uh, Ida for a ride, and his car was hit and turned over, and he got a. Uh, With uh, them in the car? Yeah. Wow. So they were suing the guy. For, uh, never got it. Yeah. Who was the one that was at fault? Was it Uncle Phil or the other yeah, guy? Yeah, but you couldn't tell Phil. You, know, <laughs> you mean he was that way even when he was a kid? You don't want to talk about Phil. It's a whole tape if you're going to do that. <laughs> well, tell him how you met Jean. Yeah, you so met her at the spa. Somebody dropped a dime, so uh, I pick it up. I say, hey, I, you dropped a dime. So he <laughs> said, I didn't drop it. Uh, so he it must be four loud from you. So she took the dime and stopped talking, so I took her home. So, uh, you picked her up. <laughs> so, he bribed her. the time. <laughs> so then uh, it's, uh, you go on, uh, where are you going to go home? So she said she had some girlfriends with her too. So and I uh, had a car, so I took her home a couple of times. Then I guess to call her to, uh, for a date. So she was used to, uh, you don't call a girl for a date. You, you call it to the, the now for a date for next Saturday. Uh -huh. uh, Saturday afterwards, so when she's meanwhile, so she can consider who she she gotta be if she accepts the date right away. So she she not may have gotten demand. something better. <laughs> she she's not in demand. So it happened all the time. But I was a, such a happy, lucky guy. I had a million boyfriends, and we used to go everywhere. Together, they were all cool boys. So, uh, anytime we had a date with something, so I would call her and she would go, and then she figured she, would, she didn't want me to call her. If I call her for a date, uh, it should be next week she'll go. So, uh, and me, I used to come home, I want to go out with someone, so I call her and uh, she'd go out. They would go out. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what I call her one time. She says, no, she's got a date for that. Uh, all right, so I call somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> and we had so many girls. Or they all had girlfriends uh, galore. So uh, that went on for quite a while. I used to go Sunday morning. We'd go to Turkish Bath. And from there, after the Turkish Bath, we'd take a train. And What's we'd a Turkish Bath? City. Like a and, and spend the time in Man like City, and, and we go to Boardwalk, and we go eat, and things like that. That went on for a time. time. Tell him um, what a Turkish bath is. He doesn't yeah, know what a Turkish yeah, bath is. So uh, the Turkish okay. bath. So one day I'm gone, so I wanted to get somebody to go with me to the Atlantic City. So I figured the other boys they had girls that they all went. So. And here I used to call her every time, you want to go? She didn't want to go, so she didn't go, didn't go. we didn't go out. So this time, Sunday, I call her up, uh, you want to go to Lenny She says, yeah, but you'll have to meet me in the Walnut Street. Uh, that's where we took his bath. Uh, I'm going to Atlantic City afterwards. I said, all right. So 
so she did. She went <laughs> me. After that, any time I leave my door, 12 o'clock at night, so <laughs> she's going to tell you, she saw something uh, good and she didn't want to lose it. Yeah. So how, how long did you go out before you got married? Well, how long did you know her? How long did you know Aunt Judy before you got married? A half or two. And, and then when we got married, so uh, she had an older brother. And they used to give him so much trouble that they couldn't get rid of him. Finally, he gets a girlfriend. She, he was older than she. Mm -hmm. And he gets a girlfriend, and they match him up, and everything is fine. He should get a, he, and he agrees, and every, oh, the whole family he used to give him so much trouble, the whole family. So uh, he says uh, he'll... Uh, he, he agrees to marry. There was a, uh, this girl came from a rich family. The brothers were rich, not the our parents. And they had a <coughs> big cardboard factory and everything like that. And they promised them the world. So he, and here he did have a job. So it's all right. So when it comes to the side don't get married. So he says he don't want to get married. He wants Jean to get married first. Of course, uh, he was the older one, but he you don't want anyone to see anything to me halfway. And here the whole family, they were anxious for him to get married, so they get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, they were all so disappointed. So, uh, I says, well, I'm not going to get married so soon. I mean, well, he don't want to get married, he wants to get married. And so they made, decided on Christmas Eve, uh, Christmas morning to get married. So he wants to call the law. So I says, all right, I'll get married. Uh, so when are you going to marry? We get married in February. So I thought he would get married. So he did get married on Christmas. But we already made the arrangement for... Uh, for yours. Did he, so did the brother in laws give him a job, like they said? And they didn't. No? <laughs> <laughs> they got What's him a candy mean? store, and he was starving to death at uh, a candy store. Then he worked there. He was a peculiar doctor, though. But all the rest of the brothers, they were all clever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any other questions? Anything um, else you want to know? Yeah, let's, let's go back a bit. Um, when you were going from Russia to America, you said that you spent two weeks in Bremen, Germany. What did you do there? Where did you stay? We didn't do nothing there. We just waited for our time for the next uh, boat to take us. Uh, to, to, we were supposed to go from Russia to America, but you don't go there, right? Uh, we had to go to, through Bremen, and then from Bremen, the boat that takes you to America was in Liverpool. So we had to go over the English Channel to uh, Liverpool, and then Liverpool, we took the boat. Uh, that's a routine. There was this. Uh, now, was there a so place for you to stay when yeah, you were in Germany they, they and they had everything was all set up? Places. What was the place like? Was it a uh, big room or was it was uh, like a hotel? The hotel. It wasn't only us. It was uh, all the families besides. Uh, they were in the same boat like we were. Did you have a separate room in the hotel? <laughs> separate room. All <laughs> one room. <laughs> Did they feed you, or did you have to bring yeah, your own food? Feed you. How was the food? Food. We would eat even straw in that <laughs> day. Um, how did you learn English? How did I uh, learn English? Yeah. I went to school. I went to first grade, yeah, second grade. I said, when I went to first grade, uh, they uh, used to have spelling bees. Uh, second grade, first and second grade. So uh, 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 you go four days, uh, f five days in school. On Friday, the one that got the most uh, A's, so this teacher will give a nickel to. Every time the, 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 you I'm got all the A's on uh, five days, you get, give you a nickel. You know, the teachers didn't make no salary they were like today. You know, they made fish cake. So I used to get, uh, every Friday I'd have a, a nickel. <laughs> you were smart. So every day, yeah, so about a quarter, you know, it's a lot of money. Yeah. I used to be the first quarter of the school, number one. 
But uh, when you went to school, you didn't speak English yet. You were speaking Jewish when you started first grade. Weren't you speaking Jewish? Well, do you learn? You learn. I said Jewish, and uh, the you pick up no, English. When I was in the first grade. Now, did you go to a regular public school? Or did you go yeah, to a Hayden? Yeah, regular public school. When I was in the first grade, you know, we were all small kids, mm -hmm. and right across is a Catholic school there. And there, uh, they had uh, this school only had to the fourth grade, like the school I went to. It. And the Catholic school had to the twelfth grade, so they had big uh, Catholic kids, Irish, and they were all strong, you know. And we were little kids, uh, like and I was the only one. They were all the same class, like uh, we were all six, seven years old. So these Catholic schools, they didn't like the Jews. Was the school that you went to just Jewish people? Uh, the, the school that you went to, was it just Jewish people or was it no, other? No, they went out too, but they okay. picked out the, the Jewish Jews. kids that they, they didn't like. So uh, they went to this Catholic school and they were big kids. So they used to come out from the school to wait for us to come out. And when we come out, boy, they stopped. Fighting, so we had to run. Every day he's coming with a torn shirt and everything. Mm. That went on for quite a while. And my brother was uh, three, four years older than I. He went to Catholic school and he had boyfriends. Uh, you know, they were up in years mm -hmm. uh, for their age. But they had, they didn't know enough. They just come over. So they put them in the bigger grades like they are. And some of them were strong as ox. They were so a strong kid. So they found out that we were being beaten up for it. So they made up with us that we should, uh, when we go out to school uh, and uh, you see the uh, Catholic kids coming after us, uh, so we should run a certain way and they would stay there. And when these Catholic kids came chasing us, so uh, they, they, they were staying there, and as soon as we come in there, all them Catholic kids come running after us. There's plenty of them. So these uh, older kids grabbed a hold of them. They were beating them kids up. <laughs> they, one of them was a big, strong uh, Jewish kid. He was like a knox. He, so he grabbed a hold of one of them, banging their heads together, <laughs> and they were beaten up so bad that the next day the priest from the Catholics who came to our, the, the school, our principal, and she was a, a woman, that, that we beat the, the Catholics uh, kids up. So we had to stay at the school. <laughs> <laughs> but them Catholics they never, never come again. Every time when they come on in there, we come out and they stay on and say, come on, come on, uh, 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 come on. They wouldn't come. <laughs> they were. They had their lesson. What other little stories of things that happened growing up in the family that were like funny, like that, like with all the with all the sisters and the brothers? Were there? Did anybody fight oh, growing up? We all fought. No, they did. Uh, they they never, the brothers and sisters never. Well, fought. they had cliques like uh, Rosie and Tilly was one clique. And uh, somebody used to get a beating every well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. What was Aunt Kate like as a kid? She, she was the same. She hid every, uh, everywhere as you find her. She was, uh, one time we were looking high and we had a piano there uh, when we were kids. And they were all taking lessons. Nobody took, uh, took to the piano. <laughs> so, uh, we used to have a teacher, Max Gilgore. Remember her? What's her name? Gilgore, Max. Yeah. Yeah. He used to teach. He was a nice guy. He was one. I mean, Cabo or Reno, but he was before us, mm -hmm. and he was pretty well educated. And he, he wanted to show his his superiority against us. So he was a good guy, kind of player. So he used to give him lessons. So what did Aunt Kate, did Aunt Kate take lessons too? Uh, Aunt Kate, no, she, uh, 
he, you know, she used to hide. You couldn't find her. Or whatever. One time we had a, a cat, a, a baby grand, and uh, it was an old, old model. So they, somebody had to throw it out, so we took it in to take lessons. One night I get up to Canada's plane, and nobody saw it. We had uh, mice, and, uh, so they got in the piano, run up and down the piano, and we were playing piano. <laughs> Did you ever go on family vacations? Or family outings? A what? A family vacation where all of you jump in the car. Like with Bobby oh, and all the kids right in the They had a city in the fort. Your car? Yeah. So uh, they had three people sitting there, you know, all kids. And, mm -hmm. And three in the front, my, and my father and mother were sitting in the back with one kid, and three other one, kids were on back of them. So it's about nine people in a little pool, and they had no tires, they didn't have tires with rims and so them days they had it. And you have a tire flat, you mount it on the tire, the wheel, the wheel was all attached to the car. So we went to... And it's say one time from 8 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock at night. Until you we got there? Eight flat tires. <laughs> Every time I had a flat tire, I used to mount them and take it off. <laughs> That's it. Uh, and uh, what's her name? Uh, one time we were looking for a case, she disappeared. We look all over and we went to the station house and everywhere we come, couldn't find her. Finally, we come down and she fell asleep uh, under the piano and she was sleeping <laughs> and we were looking all high and low for her. But she, but she always said, uh, my mom always said she never shut her mouth. She always talked, didn't she? Oh, Kate? Kate. Yeah. She did, still does. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of games did you play as a kid? When I was a kid? Yeah. Oh, we used to play baseball, all the, all the, uh, all them sports. That uh, used to go to fights. They used to have Jewish uh, kids were the major fighters in them days because they couldn't make a living like today. You don't see no baseball player or uh, boxer or fight. Then all the fighters were champions. The Jewish kids. That that Benny Leonard. You ever hear him? No. He was a world lightweight champion of the world for years and years. That uh, Lou Tender, you ever hear? I've heard of him. And uh, He's uh, Benny Bass. Yeah, they were all Benny Kramer. They were all champion fighters. And that uh, Phil Glassman was uh, the manager, Jewish guy. So he managed all of them. They made, uh, you know, they made money, but they used to get beat up plenty too. <laughs> but they were exceptionally good. They would. Now, and then the Jewish kids would all go to see the fights, and the Jewish fighter there. So we used to root for the Jewish boys, and so that made it interesting. When did you get your first radio? Radio? Yeah. Oh, that's a long time. We used to have a radio that st you had a stick with a pin there to get the station. That was a long, long time. Did you have any favorite shows? The television I got was uh, right after World War I, uh, two. It was on, uh, uh, they just started the television, uh, brought out, the Philco brought out a small set, a six inch two, and they stopped uh, playing the baseball games, the, uh, the fights, uh, the baseball games I think. And uh, yeah, baseball games, and they all wanted to see the baseball games. So we had a base, uh, the, I had the first television at Foco, and I had it mounted up, and we had chairs all the way around there, and uh, the recreation room, and all the friends used to come sit there, and I used to serve them drinks and pretzels and. <laughs> You couldn't get whatever you couldn't get during the war. I just was able to get. How could you get it? Looks well, like I got pool. I knew somebody that had a, a store. So you needed a cooper. 
the coupon. And I knew the guy that owned the store, and uh, they used to do me favor, give me, he used to give me chewing gum, packs of it. And I would give him all the chewing gum, and I got a nephew, Gilbert Abramson. You ever hear? He's a lawyer now. He's got a son that's 26 years old. <laughs> so he was about six, seven years old, so he used to come and bring his boyfriends, and they used to sit and watch the game. Then I'd give him chewing gum, and then I gave him a couple packs of chewing gum. So he used to go out, he had boyfriends, so he used to sell them for uh, the chewing gum for a nickel apiece. <laughs> <laughs> so one uh, time, uh, that one of the kids' mother uh, found out, so she calls uh, my sister, well, that's uh, Gillen's mother, and she starts going around, your kid is, does so-and-so, he gives him uh, bubble gum, and he charged him a nickel a piece and uh, all this here. So she let the girl out of it. And then she get, he got out to me, don't you dare give him any chewing gum. <laughs> and he, until this day, he remembers. Uh, he he remembers, remembers that. Well, you got enough now? Um, there's a few more questions. Do you remember your parents' birthdays? Yeah. My parents' birthdays. Well, I know how old they were when they died. And so I, my father was 60 years old. When how was it when, when your father died in the house? Well, we he died were, in the house? Well, no, I mean, like, how was his family and what, what, was, oh, we what were, happened after we he died? We were living a life of rally then because all kids were, older? were all big and, uh, and uh, we had a house on Fifth and uh, Rittner Street. You remember yeah. that? So everybody, everybody that they was old, 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 old enough to work gave yeah. money to yeah. run the house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. How did your father die? Huh? How did your father die? He had. Uh, he had liver, liver cancer. Trouble. He had liver cancer. Yeah. They, now was he sick for a long time? No. No. Now, how was Bubby after he died? Anyway, after she died. Well, I mean, did they ever? Did she ever end up loving him? No. Well, they. Uh, it was no. It was like. It, uh, but after uh, living with him for so many years, they well, had. They been. lived. Uh, you know, they lived their life. They were married, and uh, they uh, wasn't uh, like today. You marry a person that you love and you live in. Mm -hmm. uh, that days it was a necessity, you know, and just, you know, nine, we had nine kids, and everyone was different. Uh, my sister Ida, boy, she was terrific. She was some singer. She had a voice that was, we thought she was going to be a, an opera star. And, uh, but she fell in love with a guy, and uh, this guy, didn't, uh, the, his parents didn't want uh, Ida, so uh, it broke up and then she was broken out of it, so uh, since then she came up this uh, opera And with that, so she became a, a teacher, she used to teach in mm -hmm. school for singing and all that stuff. What happened with, well, what were you going to ask? What happened with Aunt Rosie? And you said that she married an Italian man, but yeah, so what was the story with that? Well, uh, he was such a nice guy. He was wonderful for her. And, uh, he, and uh, my mother was so heartbroken, she wanted to kill herself. You know, she was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And an Italian in them days was murder. So uh, he, he turned. Uh, he became Jewish. And he went through hell to become Jewish. And my mother didn't really approve of it. So the rabbi from our synagogue got a hold of my mother one time and he, he says to her, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Here's a boy does a thing like that. He turns himself to Jewish. He disinherited his whole family. He also and got circumcised, didn't he? Yeah. But he was... Uh, 17. When he was 17? 
I guess so. I, and he was he had, had to be circumcised not by a doctor, by a murder. Right. And he became Jewish, and he was so friendly Jewish. He was a policeman, and then, and he was stationed around the synagogue where my father lived. And then they used to, they used to beat up the Jews a lot. And the police they didn't do. care, they overlooked it. When he was around, they used to beat hell out of the guys. They and he was... <clears throat> he was pretty more Jewish than the Jews are today, and uh, <clears throat> he, he got sick. He was in the army, and uh, he was plain, uh, never thought anything about him not being Jewish. So uh, <clears throat> he took sick, and he had pneumonia or something, and they knew he was going to die. So he was in... Uh, uh, municipal hospital. They had a hospital uh, That was the Veterans Hospital. Uh, the Veterans Hospital. No, it was called the different. Wasn't it the Veterans? Uh, municipal was uh, where they, they have it. So, uh, so he was uh, laying in that hospital. I and, didn't remember uh, that. <coughs> uh, my sister uh, Rosie passed by and you know she was with him all the time and the priest came by so every Gentile, they come in and make a prayer. But, so Rosie says to him, Jack, do you want to see the priest there? I'll go out and I'll let him talk to you. What do I got to talk to him for? He says, he's going to tell me anything he wants. Uh, so, you know, they want to confess. Uh, right. uh, so then when, uh, <coughs> when they knew he was going to die, so he told my sister Rosie that he wants to be buried. You know, he had a large family too. And they were all crazy for Rosie. So they, she, whatever she wanted to do, they agreed to. Said, when I die, I want to be buried in the same place where your father is buried, like my father. So that's why he was buried in the Seventh. That's where my father was. Yeah. And uh, he was buried there, and he, uh... How he, old was he when he died? Oh, I he was about 45. Yeah. 45 or 46 years old. No, I think he was less than that. No, I, I think that's it. Yeah. You, you know, if you want to know the dates, when we next time we go to the uh, cemetery, on the stones are the dates of their birth. Oh, had, uh, so I'll write them down. Okay. It's on a stone stone. Yeah, yeah, no, we were just there, but next time I go, I'll write it down. And, uh, Rosie, we would. Well, uh, are you finished? I think Joe's getting tired. Yeah. Do you have any more questions, so? Anything else? No, you answered a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> I read more than that. This ain't even a tenth of what I really I, I, I can imagine. You know, I'm giving you a. Uh, the short story, short things, uh, uh, the things uh, what I tell you that happened was um, uh, minor that really happened. It uh, sounds always a whole lot that can't be possible, but it's, it's things that really you had to go through yourself. It's forgetful. We had uh, so much headaches and trouble. Oh, my God. But we all came out of it, and we're all okay. Yeah, we're all all right. Now. Yes, and but she raised the, beautiful children. You can imagine, Kate, when we you were married. So uh, my uh, Jean worked in a place. She worked there for years and years. So she quit her job, and uh, if I uh, she quit the job, and if I. Uh, couldn't support her, you know, I didn't make no money when uh, uh, we were married. It, it was uh, then, then they said the depression was on. Mm -hmm. Anybody made anything uh, for a living, ten dollars a week was a lot. So uh, she uh, she worked at a place, at a funding place. So uh, she 
Just right. for you can't even go to McDonald's for $10. Yeah, you could for McDonald's. I got a, a letter from uh, Boss when we were married. He gave her $100 for a gift. Them days, $100. That was like $1,000 today. 1000 today isn't uh, nothing compared to that $100. So we were married, and uh, when we came back, the banks closed. The, the bank that she got the $100 from when closed up. I didn't close for the day, it went out of business. Yes. No, they closed the bank. And uh, you lost the, the money bank. was all frozen. And, uh, so he found out this boss, she was crazy, but she found out that she lost the uh, cash to the check. check. So he gave her another $100. And oh. we gave him the check. Maybe yeah. someday he must have gotten it back. But he gave her back $100. And we got a letter. Someday when I get a chance, I'll show you the letter that he wrote for. Well, he, you know, when I was pregnant with my twins, yeah. Mr. Cohen did the same thing because he knew, he said, if I would have two uh, twin boys, yeah. he would give me a hundred dollars. And at that time, he was very sick. He was dying from yeah. cancer. And he came to the hospital with his nurse. Uh, and he somebody gave me $100. had a boy, boy, he was crazy. Yeah, he, he was crazy about it. He us. was one of the nicest guys. Yeah, he was the, he, yeah. He, and Jean, uh, she started in business with him when he started. Uh -huh. She was very spooky, but he trusted her with everything. You know? And uh, when I, they used to borrow money from the, the bank. And when they borrowed money, did you know that? When they borrowed money from the bank, he had to get him, uh, somebody to endorse for him. He was a wealthy man when he died, but yeah. before, uh, if he got a uh, uh, couple hundred dollars for the bank, so he, he, he had a man that did the delivery for him. He used to deliver much of them, mm -hmm. whatever he had. <coughs> so he had to get him to sign the, endorse the note to take it to the bank. And he was ashamed of doing it a lot of times. So he used to get Dean to take the note to the, this guy to uh, okay the, the loans. Every time when it was due and he couldn't pay it, so he gave her the job. That's how they How much he trusted her? They all had respect for yeah. her. Yeah. It, was a, it was a beautiful relationship. Okay, let's end it. <laughs>